Rob Woolen, CTO, co-founder of Sigma. I'm super happy to have you on the show, powered by Snowflake. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me here at Snowflake. So tell me a little bit about Sigma. So Sigma we've built as a cloud interface to Snowflake. We wanted to make it so that the power of the AI and data cloud, we wanted to make that accessible to anyone. Mm -hmm. So we make that accessible as far as you can build traditional analytics, business intelligence, and reporting, all in a spreadsheet interface. Mm -hmm. So we made that so that the billion spreadsheet users can already use this product straight out of the box. Mm -hmm. We've added in support for Python, for SQL, for natural language. We've started adding AI and ML workloads as the AI data cloud has evolved. And now we're really focused on taking that, and we want to make it so that you can do things like write forecasts, you can actually read and write data, you can build applications. So really going beyond sort of the traditional analytics and thinking about how do you run your business on Sigma and Snowflake together. Yeah, and it's great to see how you keep innovating. But before we go into what's new for Sigma, uh, where is Sigma today? Sure. Sigma has about a thousand customers. We have customers, everything from the smallest startups up to some of the largest enterprises. Everyone from Blackstone to DoorDash to Moffitt Cancer Center. A lot of these are, are great shared customers with Snowflake. We also have about 450 employees, and we were very proud to have just raised a $200 million Series D, which Snowflake was one of our investors. <laughs> Congratulations. And Snowflake is not only your investor, Snowflake also has recognized you for being an amazing partner, I understand. Yes, we just won for the second year in a row the BI Partner of the Year. So thank you very much for that award. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. You deserve it. And let's talk about now what's new with Sigma. Uh, I know you have two demos. We are going to have the second one in a different episode. But for this one, what are we going to cover? So one of the great innovations mm -hmm. that uh, Snowflake has been bringing out is their support for native applications. And as part of that, we're releasing Sigma as a native application. So the first demo I'm going to show you is the first milestone on that. It's what we call the Sigma Data Path application. And we're going to show you that native application where the Sigma data is actually running through the Snowflake containers and the Snowflake as a Snowflake native application. <laughs> Sigma running as a Snowflake native application. How does that work? I love it. Let's go deeper into that. Absolutely. Let me show you here in this architecture diagram, give you some of the details. So Sigma is actually running as a container. You can see here in the first side, what we've really done is separate the what we call the data path of Sigma from the metadata. So data would be anything where we're actually bringing data, we're either reading or writing data from Snowflake. And metadata would be things like when you create a Sigma workbook or if you change you know, a chart to be blue, that type of thing are all sort of more configuration. So all of the customer data, everything coming from the customer's Snowflake instance, mm -hmm. either being read or written, is all going through now a Snowflake container service run in the customer's Snowflake environment. So it stays in their Snowflake cloud. They install it as a native app. It leverages all of the governance and security that they already trust out of Snowflake. And they don't have to think about securing two different environments. They just secure that one single environment. Everything runs there. The metadata side then is managed uh, separately out of Sigma. And as we continue on these paths, we're bringing more and more into that Snowflake container and single tenant environment. I see. So that's why you call it Sigma Data Path. Yes, it's the first milestone. Yes, classically, Sigma has run outside of Snowflake. Now we can run certain parts up inside the Snowflake. And for some customers, it's really important that data doesn't leave Snowflake. Absolutely. We wanted to focus on data first because that tends to be the critical thing people are worried about. They want to make sure that their data stays within the Snowflake cloud, and we wanted to leverage that immediately. Cool. So let's talk a little bit about this diagram. What are the different steps we see here? Absolutely. So you can see here that it starts in the multi-tenant Sigma cloud. This is where all of the metadata management is done. If you look at step five here, we're actually starting from the client and the browser. So the browser is actually talking both to our metadata service in the Sigma cloud, but then all of the data work, the number two here, is being pushed through the native app. And so those containers that are doing things like query generation to actually generate the SQL, everything that's doing reading and writing of data, so all of our write back features like input tables, they all run through those Snowflake container services, and all of the data then traveling between the database and the browser is managed entirely through the Snowflake container services that are installed via that native app. Huh. This is a real 
cool architecture. And I can see the browser, how it's joining data, the metadata from Sigma Cloud and bringing the customer data straight out of Snowflake. Absolutely. This is, you are moving certain logic that Sigma developed into a container. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Everything that really involves the data, so the generation of the SQL, the actual execution of the SQL, the transport of the results, anything that, that involves either the data generation or the data being read or written or the data in transit. I'm going to say the word data a lot of times because you'll sort of understand here it's all we about love keeping data. the data in the Snowflake <laughs> containers. That's the data path. And we can see this in action. This is not just a diagram. Yes. This is reality now. Let me go ahead and show it to you. Excellent. So I'm going to first jump into my Snowflake configuration here. You'll all recognize it as Snowflake users. And you can see here that I've configured a specific compute pool and a test environment for my data path. And then I'll jump over into Sigma. And if you're a Sigma user, you'll realize that you know, you've, people have been able to connect Sigma to Snowflake for a long time. That part is, hasn't really changed. But if we go down to the bottom here, you'll notice something very different. You'll notice now that we have a URL that's running in this data path within the Snowflake cloud. That is the ingress URL. That's how you're actually going to access the, the container services. So this is a new configuration specific to containing that data in the data path. And let's jump over and let's actually see Sigma running on the data path live. Mm -hmm. So what I'm showing you here, this is a traditional sales dashboard. And it looks, for any Sigma user already, they'll say, that looks like Sigma. And that's what we want. We want them to feel like security is just something that is configured and happens automatic for them. They don't need to think about, it's not going to be a different product. It's not going to be a limited product. They're going to get everything that's great about Sigma and Snowflake running on top of this data path environment. And you have a nice company here. Plugs Electronics. Plugs Electronics. They yes. are our fake demo company, but they're in the electronics business. And you can see here that we're showing a dashboard of a bunch of their sales revenue, their cost of goods sold, gross profit, and gross margin. And one of the great things about Sigma and Snowflake together is that you're not only just looking at these sort of aggregated results, you have really the ability to jump in the data, to see something, dig into millions of rows of data, and discover those insights. And so I'll show you here. Any Excel user would recognize we have a pivot table here. I'm looking at a bunch of product data here. You'll notice in the entertainment, we've lost about $10 million on our uh, profit there. That's probably something that I want to go ahead and look into. And so with Sigma, you have the ability here to do any sort of drill down live. We can drill this, and we can choose to drill it by anything that we want to drill it by. Let's go ahead and drill by product name. And you'll see that all these queries are run live. Everything here came exactly through that data path. All of the data that we're showing here, it never left the Snowflake cloud. Right? That's the magic of this solution. I can also, at any time, jump in and see the underlying data. And so I'm not limited to just seeing sort of those you know, aggregate results in a pivot table. I can actually see the row level data. You can see I'm playing with, this happens to be 215,000 rows. We could play with 215 million. Billion, all of that is leveraging that great power of Snowflake and pulling it through into the interface. So we've done all this, and I'm showing you sort of the, the end result of building out a dashboard. Mm -hmm. I also like to show people the a little bit more of the, how do you build up something from scratch? So let's go jump in here, uh -huh. and I'm going to show you just, let's imagine we just started with some basic sales transactions from, of course, our, our Plugs Electronics company. And you know, the first thing you'll notice if you glance on the top here, if you look at that URL, you can see we're going through the Snowflake cloud. So it reinforces to the user that this is part of the data path that we are flowing through that secured environment. And let's just start doing some analysis here. You'll notice that I have 4.7 million sales transactions. I want to start understanding something about those. What's going on with them? And a lot of times with that sort of volume, you can't bring that into a spreadsheet. You can't just do that on your PC. You want that data to be in a central governed system. And so let's just start by saying, I want to go ahead and group it by that product type. And I'm going to also group it by brand. And what you'll see here now is uh, as the data loads, we're going to have taken the data, divided it by product type, and I can even collapse this down here so we can get a little more focused on the brands. And I might do something like, let's go ahead and calculate the total revenue for each product type. Mm -hmm. And let's go ahead and calculate it also for 
each brand. Now, one of the common things that people want to do is figure out a percent of total. How much did each of these brands contribute to the overall product type revenue? And for a lot of people, that requires writing some sort of, you know, more complex SQL, maybe asking a data analyst to help them out. But what you really want to be able to do is just say, what if I just took brand revenue and divided it by product revenue? And writing that easy formula there, making it a percentage, you can see just like how quickly we leverage the power of that on top of many millions of rows to get to like a quick insight. And all of the familiar things that you'd want to do in a spreadsheet, maybe you want to make that quickly a scale so you can spot insights. We could visualize this. We can. There's so many things you can so quickly play with the data. And a lot of things that I try to impart on people is we want working with these sort of like AI and data things to be fun, right? It should be playful. You should feel like you can very quickly get to insights. You can explore different things. No one ever, you know, thinks in a tool like a spreadsheet, here's the next 30 things I want to go do, right? They iterate very, very quickly. And when you have this great power of something like Snowflake, where you can quickly move through large volumes of data, it lets anyone quickly play with the data, explore different things, learn different things. And that's really the power of what we're trying to unlock. Yeah. This is an amazing UI. Like the demo of Sigma itself is amazing. Now to see it running inside of Snowflake just adds a uh, completely different layer of the of security for the data that your customers might want. How have those conversations been? It's been great. I think for a lot of customers, for, for very good reason, right? It is difficult for them to add in uh, new tools to in, you know and, and support new environments. And so being able to tell a customer, you already support the Snowflake environment, instead of bringing the data out and bringing it somewhere else, we're going to bring all the computation into the data, into that secured environment, and let it run directly against the warehouse. It's made a lot of their security conversations so much quicker and easier, and lets them to get to value much faster. So the quicker we can get people using these tools, using this sort of technology, the better it is both for us and for them. Yep. For you, for Snowflake, for our customers, our joint customers. Absolutely. You know, I feel very passionate. We want everyone using these tools to be able to use this type of data. We want to let them use it securely. Yep. Let's talk a little bit about your re uh, partnership relationship with Snowflake since the beginning, how you, we've grown together, and how we are bringing to the market features like this together. But let's start at the beginning. So we founded the company 10 years ago. I've been in enterprise software now for over 25 years mm -hmm. and working on cloud for a long time. I was at Salesforce for many years. And then we founded the company shortly after actually Snowflake was founded out of the same venture capital firm, Sutter Hill Ventures. And so we were lucky enough to see Snowflake early on and had an idea of what its power and potential was. We were really focused on trying to figure out what is the right interface to make that accessible to so many people. And so we spent a lot of years actually sort of iterating on that interface. It's hard sometimes to figure out what is exactly the right product to build. And a lot of our success has really come since 2021. That's when I think we started to get the right momentum on the product and the market was really large enough for us to go attack it. Yeah. I like how you call it the interface to the data cloud. This is how people should use Snowflake. I absolutely believe so. I think uh, what we want is we all are very passionate about data and we're very passionate about having centralized data. But we want to make that accessible to everyone. And so for a lot of people, they've been locked out of being able to leverage a lot of this great technology because it required sort of detailed SQL knowledge or maybe detailed Python knowledge. We want to make it so that anyone who can use a basic spreadsheet or type a question, they can build analysis, they can build applications, they can essentially do their work on top of this data. Build analysis, build applications, understand their data. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Do their work, right? Run mm -hmm. workflow, the, all the decisions that people have to make, all the forecasting they have to make, what should they be doing tomorrow? We believe all of that's going to come out of data, and data is the key for also AI and ML. Mm -hmm. And we think everyone's going to need to be able to do that. We want Sigma and Snowflake to be how they can do it. You know, Every Snowflake Summit, when I see these new features come out, we're always thinking, how do we adopt this in our platform? How do we extend it out to a much larger audience? Yep. It's great how Snowflake has given you a lot of feedback, being your initial customer, user. Uh, at the same time, you've given a lot of feedback to Snowflake. Oh, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think every good partnership, you think about how do you make each other's products better. And mm -hmm. sometimes we're often working with people in like a finance department 
or you know, a marketing department or operations department. Sometimes we have users that you know aren't traditionally some of the users that used a lot of the, the core platform technologies, and so we can help sort of bring a different perspective at times. Yeah, and that's been a big part of developing a native app using Snowpack container services. Absolutely, it's been a great partnership with the team. We continue to work with the development team, and as the platform evolves, we intend to continue to pull and leverage all the features of the Snowflake platform. I love it. And now this is where I want to split our episode because you have another demo, but we should put that in a different episode that people should watch later. But can we have a teaser for that demo? Absolutely. So we didn't release just one native app. We released two native apps. The second native app, which we'll be showing in the next episode, is all about Python. We are adding Python support running in the Snowflake containers as a native app integrated with that Sigma application that I just showed you. Yeah, Python inside all of this. We are going to ask people to tune in for a different episode for that. But before we wrap up, anything you would like people to do next? Absolutely. Our Sigma uh, native apps are available today on the Snowflake catalog. So please go there. You can contact our team through there and get early access and give us feedback. And then our website is sigmacomputing.com. Love to uh, have you uh, join our Sigma team. I'm going to check the Sigma website, but also you are in the Snowflake Marketplace. And people, stay tuned because we have more episodes, including a completely different demo from Sigma and more of our conversation. Thanks for watching. For more Snowflake developer content, go to developer.snowflake.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe.